you know, there is a proper way to fight. And we, we need to learn how to properly fight. We need to know how to fight. How many times do we fight uh, kind of um, our own way with our rules instead of God's rules? And my hand's up. Now, there's no doubt my hand. I, both of them should be up. Both feet should be up because, you know, bring my wife and she'll raise her feet for me too, you know, and hands. <laughs> I'm speaking to myself. I don't know about you, but I, I know for me that I, I can fight wrong. I, I, it's incorrect how I fight sometimes. Yeah, I can easily lose it. And it all starts from anger, amen? It all starts from unrighteous anger. It's easy to fall into that. Uh, I want to you know, give you the definition of distorted again. Pulled or twisted, out of shape, misleading, a false account or impression, misrepresented. There's too many times that within our fights, I call them Christian discussions. This is what my wife, me, my wife and I don't fight. We have Christian discussions. Uh, I use that term. But too many times, it would be easy for our fights to be twisted. It'd be f- easy for it to be false uh, account or impressions. It'd be false misrepresentation. Amen? And, and I say that because it, it's distorted because too many times we have, we have fights that do not reflect Jesus Christ, who we call our Lord and Savior, who we're supposed to imitate. So I want to talk to you today about how to fight, how to fight, because I know for me, I get it wrong. There's easy things, there's things that that we can easily say, we can easily keep score. We we do this, amen? So I, I want you to sit back, I want you to absorb this message, because this isn't just about your spouse, this can be your friend's. This could be your family. This could be the, the gentleman that's driving down the road that just cut you off. This could be your, your coworkers. This could be your boss, amen. This could be how you handle that you didn't get that promotion. This could be all of life. Because we, we fight in all areas, amen. We fight in the grocery store. We fight at home. We fight on the road. We fight at Home Depot or Lowe's. We fight at work. We fight within ourselves. Amen. Have you ever fought with yourselves? You, I mean, you just you're fought, fighting with yourself. You, you, I mean, there's battles going on with your mind, and you're just fighting back and forth and back and forth, and and you're not even playing fair against yourself. I know I don't. Well, you know, I, you can't call me that. I'm not. You know, then I got to get scripture and read it to myself. No, I'm made in God's image. I can do all things. You know, it's this battle that goes on and on, and, and it's easy that we fight the wrong way within ourselves as well. So this just isn't about just a spouse, a marriage. This isn't just about just that. It, it's about all things. It even goes to the point of our kids. How are we fighting with our kids? Because too many times we fight with our kids, but as adults, we're trying to win every battle. It's easy to put a scoreboard up once we get a little bit PO'd. Don't tell me when I don't do that. I've got my scoreboard right here and I'm going to win this thing. It's distorted. It's wrong. It's out of alignment with God. It's distorted love. So, how do we fight? Ephesians 6, verse 12. This is what God says. This is what we're fighting against. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Let's just stop there. We do not fight against flesh and blood. We don't wrestle against that. We're not in the midst of destroying flesh and blood. But how many times within a fight, we are determined that we're going to destroy the other individual. Maybe it's not a physical, but maybe it's a verbal. Maybe it's your husband. Maybe it's your kids. Maybe it's your boss. You know, we don't, this is, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. It's not about flesh and blood. Because if I choose to come against flesh and blood, I'm coming against God's creation. If I choose to fight against myself, I'm coming against what God's created. And everything that God's created is perfect. There's no blemish. It's not an accident. There's no issues. Amen. God's creation, God doesn't make mistakes. So if I choose to fight against flesh and blood, I already picked the wrong thing to fight against. When I choose to fight against my wife and I put up this this scoreboard and I'm going to win, I'm going to knock her down, I'm going to kick her legs from out under her. Oh, I'm going to make sure she knows her past. Let me just tell you your past. I'm, I'm fighting against flesh and blood, am I not? For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. 
That's what we fight against. But too many times, as children of God, we are in the midst of trying to beat that flesh. We're in the midst of trying to draw blood. I know that flesh lives because it's standing before me. I proclaim it as Goliath, and now I'm going to draw some blood. I'm going to remove its head. I'm going to shoot the slingshot right at my wife. I'm going to shoot the slingshot right at my husband. My boss, oh, he's going to get it. I'm going to gossip about him at break time. I'm going to let everyone know about his problems and about his issues and how lousy he is. I think the word applies to us. I think we all can fall into this because we all can have anger. It's whether we choose to fight with righteous anger or unrighteous anger. See, Jesus, oh, did he not get angry? He went into his house that they call a house of prayer and he overturned the tables. He said, get this mess out of here. I need you to clean up the cows, the sheep. I need you to get rid of the poop at the same time. Clean the stains off my floor. I need everything, the money changers out of here. I need my house clean. But it was with righteous anger. There was nothing that was unrighteous about Jesus. See, we can come into an argument with our spouse. We can come into an argument with our kids. We can come into an argument with our neighbors, with our co-workers and have righteous anger. Choose to be able to edify and glorify God in the midst of the situation instead of just destroy. Ephesians 4, 26. Be angry and do not sin. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath nor give place to the devil. Did, did you understand what it's saying? Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. See, too many times when we go into a, a, a fight, we're not glorifying God's name. We're in the midst of glorifying Satan's name. When we choose to fight ex-Christians the correct way, the only one that's going to get hurt in this situation is the devil. The devil should be the only one that gets destroyed in the midst of an altercation. When my, I come together with my wife, when I come together with the sheep, when I come together with my, you know, with, with my son, when I come together with friends, when I'm out there driving and I don't have no clue who this individual is, but I know they cut me off and I know all the flesh wants to go and cut them off. Amen. I want to tell them that they're number one. I don't want to just show them. I want to physically tell them too. Do, amen. At the grocery store, someone cuts in. You already been standing in line for 30 minutes and this joker's gonna come. I want, man, you know, what, what are we fighting? I wanna let them know what I think. And as soon as I go unrighteous, I'm glorifying Satan instead of glorifying God. How many times do we as Christians, we end up fighting and Jesus is the loser because we're examples, we're imitators of him. We get so angry that I'm bound to determine I don't care what I destroy. I'm going to make sure that they know it. Husbands, we've destroyed our wives too many times. But I'll tell you what, I'd much rather my wife come up and give me a slug in the face, knock me in the head, whatever, instead of words, because words will destroy. Words hurt. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words won't hurt me. Oh, bull, that's a lie right there. Go ahead, hit me at the stick. Guaranteed, my head's probably harder than most of your sticks. So I'm going to be okay. It's the words that come in and penetrate that really hurt. So how, how, how are we fighting? Are we glorifying God or are we glorifying Satan? It says in Psalms 4.4, Be angry and do not sin. Meditate within your heart on your bed and be still. Meditate. You know what meditation means most of the times? I, I, I'll, I'll get this a little bit later. But meditation most of the times, like in Psalms, it says, you know, meditate on the, 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 the word day and night. You know, that, that means memorization of scripture. That means if I choose to do what Psalm says, be angry and do not sin. Meditate within your heart. If I would just back up, I'm a little bit upset. Let me just get back in my prayer closet. Let me get back and meditate on some scripture within my heart. That's the reason why memorization of scripture is very important. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. That meditates means scripture memorization. That means I'm taking my time to memorize scripture. And let me show with you, share with you what you're going to get out of this. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in a season. His leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he puts his hands to will prosper. 
as long as I fight righteous. I have to have righteous anger. I need to meditate on the word. What if we would step back, meditate on the word within our heart before we opened our mouth, before we did a reaction, before we did those facial expressions? Some of you just fight with that. Rolling the eyes. That's all fighting. I I know exactly what that means. It's obvious. How are we fighting? How are we fighting? Are we asking, you know, what would Jesus do in this situation? How would Jesus handle this? See, the devil, see, this is the devil. He's a slanderer, adversary. He's an accuser. We know he's an accuser. You know what the definition is of accuser? A person who claims that someone has committed an offense or done something wrong. Isn't it easy to go ahead and start confessing and accusing someone? Oh, you did this wrong. Oh, you did that wrong. Oh, you, you, you know what? You just can't do anything right. You're the worst thing out there. I can't believe God even made you. You'll never get over your past. It's easy. We fight in all kinds of different ways. I've seen too many times spouses, oh, they love to fight where, you know what? Uh, They get into this this revenge motive, amen? It's all about themselves. Pride is one of the worst things there is. Have you ever been in a leftover relationship, whether it's a spouse or whether it's a friend? They get all upset with you and they only get the leftovers. They're considered a leftover wife. I had some extra, so I just gave it to her. What you weren't really thinking about her, were you? How many wives? You know what? I had some leftover breakfast so you can have some, honey. You, you were not really thinking about me. I just, I'm just a leftover, amen? You had a little extra. Instead of going out of your way and actually preparing the meal, you know, I just get your leftovers because I'm the leftover husband. I'm the leftover wife. I'm the leftover uh, neighbor. I'm the leftover person driving down the road. I'm just a leftover. Too many times this is how we fight, right? I'm not even going to iron your clothes. At least I set them out for you. Well, and... I was an afterthought. I was that leftover. This is how we fight too many times as Christians. I don't want to be a leftover husband. I don't want my wife to feel left over. But this is what we do. Instead of what Jesus would do is I know you did me wrong, but I've prepared a meal. I have the best for you. What if we love our way through a situation? What if we fight in love? That you know what? He just ticked me off. So I'm a bit, I'm going to fix the best meal. But what if we made sure the roses were alive and made sure that she had the best chocolate and then we took her out for dinner that night? What if I made sure I waved at my neighbor instead of... What if I made sure I waved to the individual that cut me off? Man, I know I, I, I've done it too. I know I've done it too. Hey, you, that person's probably in a rush. I let him cut in line. Man, I've, God has me. He's a restorer of time. How many times we like to quote the scripture when we're in the middle of a fight? Yeah, well, out of the abundance, the heart, your mouth speaketh. We like, we love to get in a fight with scripture. Well, you know what? You know, God said I can do all things, but he definitely missed you. (laughs) Right? We love to bring God in the midst of it. And we don't realize that. uh, How are we treating God? Yeah, you know what? You still haven't mowed the yard. God said the slot fool would always be here. I just didn't know it would be in my house. You're just like your mother. You're just like your father. See how we can fight? See how how I can bring God in the midst of all these scriptures. You know that? And and we lose that. I've used it on Alma. Well, how the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Not realizing that that was just a one-time occurrence, amen? The abundance is that she loves me. The abundance is that she cares for me. The abundance is she serves me. The abundance, she takes care of the house. The abundance, she's a great mother. That's the abundance out of the heart that speaks. But in the midst of unrighteous anger, I'll point out everything. I'll use scripture. I'll tell her where she's going. I'll tell the friends where they're going. I'll tell the boss, oh, you're just a heathen. I'm going to pray hellfire down upon you. You are cursed in the name of Jesus. Am I throwing gas on the fire or am I throwing water? Is it about just winning in my perspective? Because that's pride. As soon as I allow pride to get in the midst of the fight, it's all about me. It's not about Jesus. And when I make it about me, 
I'm making it about Satan. I'm making it about the accuser. And you know what he wants? There's a difference. Satan wants everyone to lose. Jesus wants everyone to win. How are we fighting, church? How are we fighting as Christians? Are we putting a blaze on it? And I love those attitudes. I'm too old to change. I, I've heard that. 14-year-old tells you, I'm too old to change. <laughs> Jesus, man. I, I've heard it too many times. You know, that's, that's a bunch of baloney. That's garbage. You know what you're actually saying? Is you choose not to want to or God's not able. Anytime you choose not to change, there's only two options. You choose not to or God's not able. And there's only one statement. There's only one of those that are true. Because God is able if we're willing. I cannot stand. I'm too old to change. I can't. You know what? No, really? No one's ever too old. God's a restorer of time. He loves you. He gives you the best. Satan wants to tell you you're too old to change. Satan wants to tell you it's already done and over with. Because Satan can't restore time. All he can do is destroy time. But see, what Satan's destroyed, God can reverse and change. Because he's a restorer. So you might be sitting back, well, you know what? I've already said too many things within my marriage. I've already said too many things with this relationship. I've already said too many things with my boss. I've already said too many things with my neighbor. It's never too late to go back and apologize. It's never too late to show, show love. It's never too late to guard your mouth. Proverbs 18, 21 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. There's power. You have, you have death and life in the midst of your tongue. You control that. You control whether you're gonna destroy the individual or if you're gonna encourage, you're gonna edify and you're gonna glorify God in the midst of it. You have the control. This right here is a powerful tool for God. This right here shares what God has done for us and then at the same time, it will destroy someone. Let me just share what Jesus Christ has done for me. He saved me. He healed me. He restored me. He set me free. He provides for me. You're going to hell. You're the worst thing ever. Man, I, you, know, I could, you know, I've scraped better things off my shoe than you. That's the power. How many times have we done this? Proverbs 15.1. A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. How many times have we had the opportunity to say this nice word just to destroy the fight? But boy, it'd be so much better if I could just say this, what I really want to say. And, and there's a big pause in the middle of the fight. And the, the other person doesn't even know what's going on, but you're pondering. Okay, okay. I can take him down just with this one. I have him now. Oh, oh, the double barrel is loaded. Oh my goodness. Uh, right? Am I the only, uh, oh, I don't know about you, but I'm good with scenarios. I'm good with, if she says this, I know what to say. If she does this, I know, uh, oh, I, I should be a general at, in the army or in the military somewhere just because I, I can come up with every war issue there is. You know, this, if they do this, if they do this, this you know, I, I can premeditate all this stuff. And you know what? I can give them the word. I can give, oh, you know, does this go through your mind when you're in the midst of a fight? But at the same time, what is bad, there's something within your heart saying, you know, if I just say this, the fight could be over. If I would just swallow my pride, if I would just not keep score, if I would make it not about me. Because when you destroy your spouse, you're destroying yourself because yours won. And when you do it unto a neighbor, you do it unto a, a friend, you do it unto your boss, you're doing it unto Jesus. So if I choose to destroy what God's created, then I'm just trying to destroy Jesus. We know what Jesus told Paul on the road to Damascus. Man, what are you persecuting me for? Man, Jesus, I love you, but you're doing it to all my people. Look at the churches and the people you're destroying. Look, at every, look how you're fighting. You're trying to kick them out of their houses. You're putting them in jail. You're killing them. You're burning down the places. What, where, do you, where, are you, where are you doing it to me? And then the light bulb went on. I've been fighting the wrong fight. Right. See, the fight starts on our knees not on our feet. Fight doesn't start here. The fight starts here. That's where the fight starts. That's where the difference comes. If I glorify Satan or if I glorify God, there's a proper way to fight. Proverbs 29, 11, a fool vents all his feelings, but a wise man holds them back. 
You have to be a listener. Too many times when we fight, we just, it's about us. It, we, I just let me, I just got to get what I, I'm going to interrupt. But it says right here, a fool vents all his feelings, but a wise man holds them back. Proverbs 18, 13, he who answers a matter before he hears it, it is, a, it is folly and shame to him. How many times do we just want to get our word in? But if we would listen, we would hear a sincere heart. If we would listen, we would hear an apology. If we would listen and take the time. See, communication is a two-way street. That means I have to listen as much as I speak. I should be listening more than I speak. My mouth is, I only have one mouth, but I have two ears. So I think listening is more important than speaking. Amen. It gives me a time if I'm listening to meditate on the scripture within my heart. So when I choose to respond, it's going to be out of love. It's going to be to encourage her. It's going to be to edify and not destroy. You're supposed to love your wife as Christ. Amen. Romans 12. 17, repay no evil for evil, have regard for good things in the sight of all men. Repay no one evil for evil. He even continues on, if it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. How many times we want to repay? And any time that we choose to repay, what we're actually telling God is he's not capable. Anytime I want to step in and I want to handle the situation, I'm telling God that he can't handle the situation. I'm taking it out of God's hands and I'm trying to handle it. If I would leave my wife in God's hands, oh, I will have a much better relationship. Amen. If I leave my son's life in God's hands, I'll have a much better relationship. Oh, if I leave myself in God's hand, I'll have a much better relationship with myself. Amen. My neighbors, my job, my bosses, my coworkers, the driving down the road, let's just say my whole life would be in a much better situation if I give everything to him. You know, I'm going to let God sort out the ones that he chooses to have vengeance upon. It's not for me to be judge and jury. It's just for me to love. Because if I really want to get honest, how many times I deserved the ultimate judgment? How many times did I deserve hell? But Jesus is right there with open arms, loving me at each and every moment. You messed up, but I love you. He doesn't even tell me he, I mess up. I just know it because his word lives within my heart. Oh, it's this conviction. It's not condemnation. It's conviction that I have a relationship with you and I know I hurt you. And that's the most important thing is, is to come to you and repent. Remember David, whenever he had, you know, you know, slept, he went out in the balcony and he committed adultery. And, you know, we, we know what happened. He killed the, the woman's husband. He married her. Uh, he had a baby. Then the baby died. You know, he committed the sin within everyone in all of Israel. But you know what he said whenever he repented? God, before you, I sinned. Now, a lot of people say, well, why did he repent to Israel? Why didn't he repent to all of his friends? Because God was so far above. Everyone else, his relationship with God was number one, that that was the one that he knew he hurt. When we know we do something wrong, how many times have we upset someone, destroyed someone, and then we realize we have, and we go back to them and repent, but we never go back to God. We should always be willing to go back to God. And when we're willing to go back to God, that's telling God that he's number one. Verse 19, beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's a bonehead and he can't get his dirty laundry in the basket after telling him a hundred times, you got to still feed him. If she burns the food each and every time, you put a little bit of extra A1 sauce on it, amen? <laughs> and you tell her how delicious it is, right? And you pray for gift cards for the holidays. Sometimes we just have to suck it up. Don't you think most of the other individuals already know the truth? That they don't need your opinion? But too many times we give our opinion just to make ourselves feel better. Because I have to get it out of myself. I have to let her know of her past. I have to let them know what they did. I have to let them, my boss know what they, you know, I just, you know, I, because we have to get it out. And anytime that we're like that, I have to question our relationship with God. Because we should be able to come to God and give it all and walk out a new creation. That means a new heart, new change of attitude. Everything should change. 
but it tells me if I have to give my opinion and it's an opinion that is only about me because it has nothing to do with them, but it's just going to make me feel better. Well, then you know what? I don't, I have to question my relationship. Why can't I just go to God and give it to him and let him work it out? Because if I open my mouth, I might destroy the individual, but if God does it, it's going to draw them closer. How many times have churches destroyed a relationship with someone in God? You've done this. Oh, Jesus, get out of here because the walls are going to fall. Oh, my goodness. Lay hands on them because, oh, my God, pray for the building that the walls are. Right. Have you ever been in place? I, I, I remember starting a church and the pastor telling everyone, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, we will. We sure will. I know what I am in your eyes. I've heard it. How many times has the churches done more harm than the world? And you know who the church is? It's each and every one of us. How we treat someone at the grocery store, how we drive down the road, how we do, how we work and do on our job. Are we working the first four to get out of the last four? Or is, are you the one, you know what? I just know that, that I know that they're gonna be here 15 minutes. I can't kick them out of the place. They always do more than what they're ever asked. They go above and beyond. They do everything with excellence. They have no problem asking. They never gossip. They always encourage. Oh, they're not trying to promote themselves. They're trying to promote everyone else around them. Verse 20, let me read it again. Therefore, if, you, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Proverbs 25, 22 says, For so you will heap coals of fire on his head, and the Lord will reward you. I've explained to you what the, the reasoning is before. The coals, it's very important. That's the best thing. Back in, in those days, that's how you lived. That's how you kept warm. That's how you cooked. That's how you established everything. Oh, yeah, and, and to give a part of your fire, to give life to another family, to give life to the enemy is love. Remember all the ones that came into Israel to destroy Israel and they left with their, their backs all full of food. They fed them a great meal and they sent them off with more supplies. Here, go take this to your king. Can you imagine that? What if your neighbor came over and said, hey, I have a gourmet meal for you and I'm going to mow your yard. You'd be like, huh? When everything's a fight about you, it's hard to receive. Because if it's pride and it's about you, you're not going to receive from others because the only person you can receive from is you. Did you get that? Pride's about yourself. If you have pride, you'll never receive with a grateful heart because you are only able to receive from one individual and that's yourself. That's how we fight. That's how we fight. It's all about the heart. It's all about the heart. James 1, 19, 20 says, so then my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of a man does not produce the righteousness of God. Proverbs 16, 32, he who is slow to anger is better than the mighty and he who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. Oh, I have a bunch of scripture because I want you to get it in your heart. Proverbs 14, 29. He who is slow to wrath has great understanding, but he who is impulsive exalts folly. It's easy not to control this mouth, isn't it? It's easy not to control this sword. This sword is the word of God. It says whatever, whatever God's word says, it will not come back void. You know, we have the breath of Holy Spirit. He, he breathed life into us. That's what brought us to life. Genesis 2, 7, that he breathed life, Neshem, into our lungs, into our bodies, and, and we became alive. We became a living soul at that time. God Almighty did. So I speak his breath. I speak of the Ruach HaKadosh. So whatever I choose, if I choose to send out death, death is going to happen. If I choose to send out death upon a relationship, a friendship, or my job, that's what's going to happen. Gossip will destroy Hate will destroy. Bitterness will destroy. Love will edify. Love will encourage. Love will grow. Love will glorify God. There's power within this mouth. Proverbs 19, 11 says at the end there, and his glory is to overlook a transgression. Proverbs 14, 17, a quick-tempered man, man acts foolish. Proverbs 26, 17, he who passes by and meddles in a quarrel, not his own, is like one who takes a dog by the ears. Amen. 
Because some of us are just walking around looking for a fight. Some of us are carrying the fight from last week around and we're just waiting for all, let let them just say something to me. I'm ready. Am I the only one? Oh, I can ponder a fight. Oh, I can, you know what? You upset me last week and I I, I can chew on that for a while. I've got, if I don't go to God, man, I'll chew on that for several days and it'll be like a volcano if, if we cross paths. I might lose, but that's okay. I'm gonna get one swing in, whether it's physically or verbally. Am I the only one? I mean, I, I don't know about you, but I, if I don't get it out, you know, but I can't go get it out on the individual. I have to go get it out on God. I have to get it out. But, or otherwise it brews. And if it brews, it becomes this volcano. And if it becomes this volcano, it's going to erupt. And when it erupts, it's not always going to be pretty because it'll be unrighteous anger. Amen. Because you know what a volcano does? A volcano erupts and it doesn't care what's around it. Villages, houses, lives. It just destroys all things. And I don't want to be a volcano. I want to be called a, God, a child of God. I, I want to be called a friend. I want to be called an imitator of Christ. There's a proper way to fight. There's a proper way to fight. Psalms 23, 5. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. This is our God. He's prepared a table. Why as Christians, why aren't we just sitting at the table and letting him take care of it? It says in Ephesians 4, 15 through 16, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head of Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. I want us to take a look at the scripture. I just want us to understand that if I choose to do everything in love, that we can come together as a body of Christ and we can work together. The reason why the body of Christ cannot work together is because we come with our own agendas, our own pride, and it's all about us, and it's about the fight. It's about the fight. Have you ever noticed? We live in the Greek, the Greco-Roman days, amen? They built the Colosseums. And they threw two guys in there and one of them's coming out dead. One of them has to be a loser and one of them has to be a winner. Throw them in with some lions and let's see if we can defeat them. Throw them in some this, throw them in that, throw them in. And we've grown in this mentality within the flesh that everything that we encounter, we encounter it with the flesh. And God is saying, I don't fight by flesh and blood. I don't fight by flesh and blood. I, you know, it, it says that, you know, do not put a stumbling block in the, in, in, in the midst of anyone. Amen. Oh, it even says within Colossians 3.21, fathers, do not provoke your children lest they become discouraged. Don't be provoking your children. There's a proper way to fight with your children. It's not to put a stumbling block. It's not to provoke them to anger. Amen. Oh, how about your parents that, you know what, if I love and I respect and honor my parents, I should live a long life. Amen. There's a proper way to fight. That means if I'm going to fight my parents, it needs to be in love. It needs to be in respect. Whether I agree or not doesn't mean I disgrace, hit, talk about my family or others. Whether my son's done something wrong or not, it's not for me to provoke anger. Whether my neighbor's done something wrong or not, it's, you know, it's just, oh, I have to do everything in love. Maybe you have a neighbor that likes to blow stuff in your yard. And I'm just saying this because I did. I, I did. I try to handle everything with love. I'm just like trying to be transparent. But you know what I, I did? I went over and I blew off my driveway. I blew off the whole cul-de-sac. I went over there and blew off my other neighbors. And then I blew off their driveway and everything. You know what? Because love will destroy all things. And you know, sometimes we have to force ourselves to do that. So the whole body works together. Because if I don't have the love for this finger, this finger is not going to cooperate. Amen? Too many times the other finger cooperates. I'm just, just being honest. Too many times this doesn't cooperate. Because death comes out instead of life. And, and what, what he's saying in this scripture is if we start fighting the fight that we're supposed to fight, then we could all come together as a body of Christ and work in unity. That means if we disagree, I'm still gonna love. The problem is with the Western culture is if we disagree, we're cocking our guns, we're getting our punching bags on and we're getting our mouth loaded. 
I, I love, I love, and I, I've spoken about this several times. That's why I love the Midrash, the, 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 the Midrash within the Jewish culture. I just love it. I love the fact that, that, that they, you get all the rabbis together, whether some of them believe in, in Jesus, whether some of them don't, they throw out a topic. There's like a major, it looks like they're fighting. Ah! but they're not they're just they're so passionate about what what they believe in that they're expressing it but everyone leaves with a hug with a, a love you they have a relationship outside the midrash they have attached love and respect to everything that they they do not agree on amen oh they're inviting the other one come on over for dinner oh i know i'm coming to your kid's graduation i'm coming to your kid's birthday party oh there's nothing about hate because they know that they serve a god that is of love and not of hate what would it look like if all of us choose to fight according to what god has said that it's not about the flesh and blood it's about the spiritual principalities Father God, help me with my neighbor because I know that you created this neighbor the right way. I know you created my boss. Oh, you did not make a mistake. So I come against, I come against the spirit of anger. I forbid the spirit of anger. I forbid the spirit of fear. Why aren't we fighting against spiritual principalities? What are spiritual principalities? It's everything that is the opposite of the fruit of the spirit. Whatever is opposite of love, we're fighting against. We're fighting against bitterness, hatred. Oh, we're fighting against this. We're fighting against racism, amen? We're fighting against kids and poverty, amen? Poverty is just a spiritual principality that we need to be fighting against. I rebuke, I forbid poverty in my life. I forbid poverty in someone else's life. I forbid it. I forbid racism. I forbid, oh, I'm bitterness. I forbid, oh, the, the, I mean bitterness. I, I forbid the fear. I forbid, and I, oh, I, I pray a completely different way with my family. It's not about my wife. I'm not going to attack her, but there's a spirit behind it. Maybe there's a spirit within me that's brought out that spirit. Lord, reveal to me how I should pray. Reveal to me if I have a spirit of fear. Reveal to me if I have a spirit of jealousy. Reveal to me if I have a spirit of anger and help me to, to, to remove that because that is just of the enemy because if I have a spirit of anger that's not of love if I have a spirit of hatred that's not of love how many of us have patience well, I can't raise my hand on that how many of you guys have patience the opposite is what we have to be praying against that's the spirit not the individual what if we come together and we choose to fight against spiritual principalities, against the true enemy, the devil, that when we get up from the fight, the only loser is the devil. That means sometimes we're gonna have to swallow our pride and we have to walk away. That means we have to listen. That means we have to control this. That means I might have to pick up flowers on the way home, amen? That means I might have to cook a meal that means I might go, have to go over and blow off the neighbor's, you know, you know leaves. I, I might have to go to my job and, and ask for forgiveness. You know what? I did do some gossiping, but you know what? That, that's out of line. I, I'm going to make sure that you are promoted. If I make sure that you're exalted, I know God will exalt me. Because whatever I do unto you, God's going to do unto me. Amen? So if I want the best for you, that means I'm going to get the best. But if I want the worst, I'm going to walk around with the, the worst. How many times are we destroying our spouse and all we're doing is destroying herself? Husbands, let me tell you, if you're, if you're out of line with your wife, God's not gonna hear your prayers. It's 1 Peter 3, 7, it's right there. So I would, I would make it a priority. Now I'm speaking to myself, because I can do this. I, I can, you know, my wife is the type that if we have a Christian discussion, after we talk about it, it's over. I'm the type that three weeks down the road, I could be, you know, it's, it's like leaven and bread, it's rising. And it's wrong. If we've discussed it, it needs to be over. That's why men, we have to get together and pray. I'd much rather unload on Pastor Tito, not that he wants it, but I'd much rather call him and say, man, I'm and air out because he knows it's in love and then go home and walk in, hey honey, how's your day? I love you, right? Ladies, you need the same. And we need to fight in love. That's how we fight, is we fight in love. Amen.
Hey everyone, hey Pastor Daniel, I hope that you enjoyed the message today. Powerful word, powerful word from God. And we want you to get connected with us. We want to hear from you. If you gave your heart to the Lord today from the message, we want to hear from you. Email us at admin at peakworship.com and give us the good news so we could celebrate with you. And we want you to check out the website, peakworship.com. And we want you to like us on Facebook and Instagram. You can like me on um, Facebook and Instagram personally. We want to get connected with you. We want to share our hearts with you. And we want to hear more about what's going on in your life. So make sure that you get plugged in and get connected.